Train is stopping at 14th Street and turning around. And this is why. Take a look behind me. You see this giant crater in the middle of 7th Avenue, just south of Times Square at 40th Street. Crews working to shut the water off and also actually uh, clean, uh, clean out the water. There's water down there. So they've got this water pump here that's pumping the water out of the ground. And if you look down here, you can see it is now uh, flowing down 7th Avenue. So they tell us the water main uh, is, has been, the water has been shut off, but now they're trying to drain it out. And so it's just a huge mess here and certainly something you want to avoid this morning but again I was on the train uh, when this happened and uh, we got this announcement from the conductor take a listen that northbound two train ordered to turn around at 14th Street and head back to Brooklyn. That was around 3 o'clock this morning. All because of that massive water main break in Times Square. It sent a gusher of water flooding into the Times Square 123 station. We had water running down the hall of the walls, the stairs onto the tracks, forcing the MTA to shut down power and halt train service. It also freaked out some passengers. We were sitting there, and all of a sudden, the, the debris started coming down. We thought it was an explosion, but it was water. Everybody started running. It started to flood the tracks. I ran and called the cops, and everybody ran out of the subway. We didn't know what happened. We thought it was a collapse, and we saw the water, and we just everybody started running. And this is what it looked like overnight at street level. Crews working to find that break, shut off the water, and make repairs. And if you want to come back out here live, you can see we've got crews with the New York City Department of Environmental Protection. They've got their equipment. They're in the manhole right now, actually trying to shut off one of the valves. So this is a complicated operation, a lot going on, very active, very busy. And of course, we've got a huge uh, crater in the middle of the street. Police actually asking us to walk away from the corner as as we speak, uh, but there are some subway disruptions still at this hour. Heather, I know that uh, the three train has uh, resumed service, but we all know what that means. Uh, just because it's resumed doesn't mean it's going quickly. Right, and I was just checking out the MTA site, Derek, and I was and I saw that three trains are once again suspended between Chambers Street and 96th Street. One train suspended between Chambers and 96th Street. You have the two and the five trains, twos running via the five line, 149th Grand Concourse and Nevins. A and D trains, that's the way to go. Upper Manhattan, use the M7, the 10, or the 102 buses. And for service to Brooklyn, use the four, the A, and the D trains. And then we have this problem on the BQE. Northeast, the ramp to the Brooklyn Bridge is closed. You can see that these barrels right over here have been damaged. So pretty heavy delays, close to a half an hour to go only five miles. Street cleaning rules are in effect. Shirlene and David, back to you. All right, Heather, thanks. Now to the tropics as we monitor Idalia. It's been upgraded to a hurricane overnight. Yeah, the impact already being felt in Cuba. As you can see in this video, the storm is expected to make landfall tomorrow morning in Florida's Big Bend area, possibly as a major Category 3 hurricane, bringing with it potentially life-threatening storm surge and winds of over 100 miles per hour. Now, right now, a state of emergency is in effect in Florida, and mandatory evacuations have been ordered in some areas ahead of what could be that part of Florida's strongest hurricane in decades. For more, we go to Sam Champion for the very latest on the storm's track. Sam? Good morning, Shirley. Good morning, David. Yeah, Adalia is the big weather story because this storm is likely to explode in intensity in that super warm water of the Gulf. And we'll talk about that this morning so you know what's going on in Florida and with the rest of the country. But let's get you out the door this morning. We're 69 degrees outside right now. 67, our normal start temperature, so we're not too far from that. 65 and Staten Island 67 and Ozone Park right where we should be 70 near the Whitestone. Hey, good morning. If we start to look a little bit north, we're 65 in Poughkeepsie looking east. We're 68 in Montauk and that's where the rain is really not in Montauk particularly, but there's some scattered showers in that direction right now. The other thing I want you to notice about this radar loop over the last few hours is watch this rain get a little closer to the Long Island coast right there. You see some showers popping up and it actually is going to back in a little bit toward coastal areas later on this afternoon, giving us a chance of some showers 
particularly for city areas, coastal areas. The other thing going on, we've already got this coastal flood advisory out this afternoon for the overnight. That's because of Franklin, a big hurricane that's off in the Atlantic, chopping up the waters of the Atlantic. But then Adalia will cross Florida, get in the Atlantic. Neither one of those storms gets close to us in any way, shape or form, but we do get some rough waters from both of them. So for the next few days, swimming not advised because we've got rough rip currents and we also have that extra water at high tide cycles around the area and our beaches are going to be a little rough. They just are so looking through the day today. Lots of clouds out there. Western areas will start with more sunshine and will stay a little bit drier as we go through the afternoon, but we get the opportunity of picking up those scattered showers through the area this afternoon into the evening. More heavy rain by tomorrow morning's commute. This is our category one storm medallia. This super warm waters of the Gulf right here. This storm expected to make landfall by the time we get into Wednesday. So very early Wednesday morning into Wednesday afternoon. The big deal here is this storm can waffle a little bit down to the south or to the north. So we want to watch a couple things. The strength of this storm, the flooding likely with this storm, and also the direction that storm will lean. We'll talk much more about that in big weather in just a minute. What's going on, guys? We know you'll keep a close eye on it. Thank you for that, Sam. Now to the latest on the migrant crisis and a growing war of words between New York officials and the Biden administration. Separate letters from Washington offering recommendations for how the city and state can improve its response. Meantime, on Staten Island, another large protest over a new shelter at the former St. John Villa Academy. Unrest there growing by the day. Eyewitness News reporter Janice Yu live at the Roosevelt Hotel in Midtown with the very latest developments. Janice. Good morning, Shirley, and I want to start with those uh, letters from the federal government to the state and the city. So the federal government in those offered suggestions and advice, but no tangible resources, additional resources to help the ongoing crisis. Uh, it said that there were structural as well as uh, other issues with the way the city and state has been handling the influx of migrants. Among the suggestions, improving data collection, planning, case management, communication, and and other aspects of the entire operation. And this comes after the Biden administration team's week long assessment earlier this month. And just last week, Governor Kathy Hochul directly criticized the administration, saying the migrant crisis originated with the federal government and therefore it should be up to them to help fix it. In response to the Department of Homeland Security's letter, Mayor Adams said the city is grateful for the collaborative process, but that it did not address the situation on the ground. Meanwhile, protest and backlash continue over the city's plan to open new shelters. Hundreds gathered once again on Staten Island to protest the use of the former St. John Villa Academy as a shelter to house 300 migrants. Residents say it's a safety concern since the property is in the middle of a neighborhood and there are two schools nearby. We have to continue showing up and letting the mayor, the governor, and the president know that Staten Island will not take this anymore. Staten Island leaders have sued in the New York City over its decision to open up that shelter there. A uh, judge saw the case after much back and forth. Uh, as of right now, the city is able to house migrants there. But again, this is going through the legal process right now. Live in Midtown, Janice U, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. Thank you, Janice. On the Upper West Side, police are investigating the deaths of two young children and two adults as a possible murder-suicide. The family found dead in an apartment building on West 86th Street. Neighbor in the building tell us this happened at the home of the building super. Sources tell Eyewitness News the family was discovered by the father of the super who first became concerned when no one answered the phone or came to the apartment door. First responders called, called in and discovered the grim scene inside the apartment. I think it's scary. You know, I, I couldn't imagine, you know, when this happened and we're all shaking, you know, the first thing that we think is who could have come into our building and done this. Police recovered multiple knives at the scene. New Overnight Police have arrested the man who they say shot a Bronx mother, leaving her to die in her Olinville apartment. Lacone Brown is facing murder and manslaughter charges. Police say he shot Sydney Maxwell several times. Her body found Saturday night, but had been there for several days. Police were called to the Parkside houses after neighbors complained of a foul smell. Federal judge delivering a blow to Donald Trump's election interference case. She is rejecting his request to delay the trial and now set a court date 
from March 4th, the day before the Super Tuesday primaries. As for the state case in Georgia, Ray Smith is the first defendant to enter a plea of not guilty. He also waived his arraignment. Smith was an attorney for Trump's 2020 campaign in Georgia. He faces a dozen counts in the racketeering case, including a number of conspiracy and false statement charges. And former chief of staff Mark Meadows testified at a hearing yesterday aimed at moving his state case into federal court. Meadows says his actions were part of his official duty as chief of staff and therefore is a federal matter. No decision yet from the judge. A park in Middlesex, New Jersey is closed this morning because of an alligator terrorizing neighbors. The only problem, no one can actually find it. Drones were out patrolling the water yesterday, scanning it for any sign of that gator. It's estimated to be some four feet long. And for a reptile, that's, that's large, but man, this thing's pretty good at hiding. This is the only photo that claims to show the gator. You could see it kind of in the shadows of that murky water. Well, it might as well stay in the shadows because uh, they can't find it. And some people that actually live in the area want to catch a glimpse of it. They're kind of excited to see it. They want to see it. But because uh, we always go down here, there was like, there's like frogs, turtles, and a bunch of stuff in there. So my son would like want to you know, actually see it. And he wants catch to see it. the gator. Yeah. So, <laughs> so do they. They want to yeah, catch it too. I would too, man. I guess frogs and turtles are boring when you have a gator in your midst. <laughs> uh, alligators obviously aren't native to our area, so it's not clear how this animal got into the park's waters. There's a lot of speculation. Perhaps it was somebody who owned this as a pet. The park will reopen Thursday as long as officials determine there isn't any threat. Well, the owner of Madison Square Garden, Mr. Dolan, is upset about a committee decision to limit its special permit to operate above St Penn Station. They're extending the lease to five years. It's a move that could eventually force the iconic arena to find a new home. The five-year permit expected to be approved by the full city council. That should happen next month. The garden's owner has lobbied for a permanent permit, uh, but the city council says the five-year permit will force the involved parties to act on much-needed upgrades to Penn Station. However, MSG Entertainment disagrees, saying the limited permit only shortcuts efforts to revamp the site. You're never more than seven minutes away from weather and traffic. Let's go back now to Sam Champion. He's got our accurate forecast. Surely we need a gator wrestler in New Jersey. <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't that be an amazing show? Let's just bring somebody up from Florida who yeah, knows how to wrestle them and get that thing it. out of the water. Um, all right, let's talk about our day this morning. So the little squiggly, this is our new graphics package, and in some areas I like it more, in some areas I don't. But the little squiggly down here is a cloud. So it's cloudy for the first part of the day, and then you'll see a little sunshine breaking through. The percentage chance is exactly the same as the old package, where you've got a 20 to 30% chance that we're getting some showers in the area. Now, city-based here with the clouds, but north and west, it's a little bit more open. There's going to be a little bit more sunshine in the forecast as we go through the day today, but do prepare for some scattered showers this afternoon. Quick update on what's going on in our category one hurricane working into the Gulf. The reason everybody's so worked up about this and rightfully so is it's going to rapidly intensify as it moves into this very warm water, super hot water. So as it gets close to the coastline, this acts like a ramp here. So this water, it goes from very deep to very shallow in a short period of time. So this water can push on shore. So we're talking about seven feet to nine feet of water. Water. That's way above my head. I'm six feet right there. So that's imagine that much water in some cases eight to 12 pushing into some of those areas with the winds that are associated with a strong hurricane. So it's all not good for that part of Florida and that's why we're watching it. Tuesday we've got a scattered shower, particularly in coastal areas. Wednesday some very heavy rain in the morning and then we break out into some nice looking sunshine. Good morning Heather O'Rourke. What's going on? Good morning Sam Champion. We do have that ramp going from the BQE on to the Brooklyn Bridge reopened and and then the West Side Highway going south, 158th Street. We still have an accident being cleared away. Alternate side of the street parking rules are in effect, and we'll be right back after the break. All right, Heather, thanks so much. We got breaking news. Officials giving us an update on that water main break we've been telling you about in Midtown. Let's listen in. But we believe that that will be a relatively small number. And while this intersection will probably remain closed uh, for the rest of the day while we continue with the excavation and complete the repair, it is limited to this one intersection at this point. The main impact, of course, has been on the subways because the water main is above the subway station here. And so for that hour and a half or so when the water was running, the water was running into the subway system. And that is shut down. And I, I turn it over to my colleague here to talk about the impacts on the subway. Thanks, Commissioner. Uh, Rich Davey, President of Dixie Transit. So obviously working closely with the commissioner and his team to, uh, to get this uh, cleaned up as soon as we can. But as noted, 
Uh, we've had severe impacts this morning on the one, two, and three lines, um, in large part because the water has you know, seeped through here at Times Square and actually moved to its lowest point, which turns out to be south. So right now, uh, we're in particular experiencing issues at 23rd Street and 14th Street. At 14th Street, the water's actually over the rail, uh, which is obviously a dangerous condition. We can't uh, run that. In the meantime, we have crews basically walking our tunnel between 42nd Street and 14th to clear debris, make sure our drains are working, which they have been, inspecting comms rooms uh, to make sure no communications uh, were, were interrupted. But we're working, again, closely with the commissioner and his team to get service back as quickly as we can. Uh, hopefully that'll be a little later uh, this morning, but uh, again, more to come. Any idea how long This intersection, it's a little hard to say until we actually uh, expose the pipe and can figure out what the repair will require. Probably for the rest of the day, we'll we'll know more later. Do you have an idea in terms of the businesses impacted and their water going to the middle as of right now? Well, as I said, you know, most of the buildings, because these are such large buildings and, and on, on corners, they have redundant water supply. Right. So we do not expect there to be widespread impacts on the local businesses. We are right now going around to check to see who's got water, but happily, it, at this particular location, it should be con constrained. Do you have a, a cause yet? Do you know the age of the main? Uh, so the, the water main was from 1896. Uh, it's a 20-inch main, so that's a pretty big, you know, high-pressure uh, water main. We do not know the cause. We will know that after we identify the leak, cut out the section of pipe, and do some forensic analysis. That's surprising to hear it's so relatively new. A lot of times we cover these you know, 100 years old. Are you surprised by that? Thank Sorry, 1896. 18. It is, it's 120 some odd years old. Wow. Yeah. Is that a concern for you? We have all this old infrastructure. Look, you know, the, the reality is we, we won't know what the cause is uh, uh, until we do the excavation and, and examine the pipe. I got to tell you, aging infrastructure is not always bad. They built stuff to last 100 some odd years ago, and it did its job for 125 years, right? That's pretty good. Um, what we will do is we will understand what the cause of this might be, and if there's anything that we learn from it in terms of a pattern, obviously we will take that into account. Um, but no, in general, the, the original design and the maintenance of the system is more important than the age. How deep is the pipe that we reached uh, we, Well, we've reached it, but we haven't fully excavated it. I, I don't know, I'd have to get you a number. It, it looks to be about 10 or 15 feet down. As you would imagine here at Times Square, it's spaghetti under there. There's condensed steam, there's electricity, there's gas, there's telecom uh, under there. Uh, happily, it does not look like those um, other utilities were damaged in this break. Um, that's still a tentative conclusion, but, uh, but it's an intricate, uh, intricate uh, excavation right now. Do you think the city got lucky with this since it was appeared to be a smaller watering break and it's like this could have been a lot worse? Your guys got out here really quickly. Yeah, look, I mean, at the end of the day, um, there's there's another water main right here that's 48 inches. That would have been much worse because that's, you know, more than, more well, far more than double uh, the, the amount of water. Um, and it's the week before Labor Day, so hopefully we didn't infect too many people's commutes. Can you talk a little bit more about what went on underground, I mean, in terms of your response? I mean, it's a pretty harrowing thing all of a sudden this water's pouring down there. Sure, in terms no. Of your employees and any customers. Uh, of course, of course. Again, you know, as the commissioner mentioned, this was at 3 a.m., so, you know, the subway is not that uh, right. that full at that time. And I, this is, I think you also said we're lucky that this is the week before uh, Labor Day, so ridership tends to be a little lower. Um, but as I said, you know, the cleanup is going to take us some time, so I'd be advising our customers to be checking our website, looking at signage. But the 1, 2, and 3 is to be avoided. We're not running really any service in Manhattan on the 1, 2, and 3, so if there are alternatives you can take, you should take them. Um, and just continue to keep an eye out for updates, but we will work as quickly as we can uh, to address the water situation, as I said, as it flows to its lowest point, which in this case happens to be south uh, toward 14th Street. Did you say 1, 2, 3, all of this Throughout Manhattan, yes, yes, it, it's a very serious. Uh, the, with the power issues we have, um, making sure that uh, you know, obviously our trains are, are safe. We have a number of trains sitting uh, in stations because once the water gets to the rail or the third rail, it can be a dangerous situation. So, again, I, I, I encourage our customers to check our website, 
check our app to make sure and see what it is. But right now, the one, two, and three is uh, is not really running here in Manhattan. We have some tourists passing by from Australia. They were kind of in awe of All right, we are taking a look here, a live look at what's happening here in Manhattan. This is where that water main break is in Times Square. They have to dig down about 15 feet. So in the meantime, we do have these closures going on in Midtown. One, two, and three trains severely disrupted through Manhattan because of this water main break. Two and five trains are also disrupted. A and D trains, the way to go through Upper Manhattan, or use the M7, M10, the M10 two buses. Uh, the four, the A and the D trains use those for service to Brooklyn. So again, we have this excavation ongoing in Midtown Manhattan as they try to reach that water main that broke. So a lot of service disruptions with our, sur our subways. And you can see that mess that we have in the middle of Times Square. 7th Avenue closed, 42nd to 39th, 40th and 41st streets closed between 6th and 8th Avenue. And again, this is because of a large water main break. 15 feet underground. That water main was from the 1800s, so they have to dig down there. They have to try to excavate that water main that broke. Unfortunately, as you're hearing the commissioner say, there's a lot going on underground, so they have to dig meticulously and make sure they don't damage anything else that is going on underground. And we do have our street cleaning rules in effect for today.